good morning everyone in today's video we are going to see regarding the design of continuous beams in the earlier videos we have covered singly reinforced and doubly reinforced beams uh, generally when you go to the site we are going to have a framed structures wherein we are going to have the continuous beams like this here if you see in this figure this is one continuous beam what we have and here also what beam you are seeing here in this direction this is also a continuous beam so most of the time we will come across this type of beams continuous beams so now how to solve this let us try to see in this video so if you see the continuous beam the continuous beam of framing into the columns are designed for maximum bending moments and shear force due to dead load and superimposed load so these continuous beams are nothing but framing into the column what we have which is designed for maximum bending moment and shear force which might be due to dead loads and superimposed loads. So if you want to find out the maximum bending moment and shear force uh, we are going to follow many classical methods already which you have studied in your lower semesters that is we, uh, you have studied moment distribution method, Kani's method, stiffness, flexibility methods Again, there are slope deflection method. There are many methods by which we can calculate the maximum bending moment and shear force. So it will be a very lengthy calculation. So therefore, what IS code does is that it has given certain coefficients. So they have uh, IS code permits the use of moment and shear force coefficient, which is given in table uh, 12 and 13 of IS 456 for computing the bending moment and shear force in the continuous beam so uh, which is subjected to a uniformly distributed load over three or more span in which they do not differ by more than 15 percentage of the longest span so what we can do we can use this moment and shear coefficient which is given in table number 12 and 13 of IS 456 so now when this will be applied so this will be applied when the beam is subjected to a uniformly distributed load which is having span 3 or more spans and the span they do not vary by 15 percentage of the longest span if this is the case then we can apply the moment and shear coefficients if it is not fitting in this criteria then next what we have to do is that we have to follow either of these methods any method classical methods you can follow and you can calculate the maximum bending moment and shear first due to that we are going to provide the reinforcement so now let us uh, see the they have given now what you can say in the is code they have given the moment and uh, shear coefficient so let us see that moment and shear coefficient what they have given so here they have given uh, you can see now moment and shear coefficient for continuous beams so they have given what all things I have said just now all those things here they have given where coefficient given in table 12 and uh, table 13 can be used the next is in the table number 12 they have given bending moment coefficient so in the bending moment coefficient same thing you can see here now so here what I have uh, shown here same thing bending moment coefficient so now how they have given so here you can see now they have given the type of the load that is first one is what you can say dead load and imposed load fixed fixed loads then next is imposed load that is not fixed we can consider this as a live load the next is we have dead load and imposed load fixed if it is fixed you can use this coefficient if it is not fixed you can use this coefficient here in the continuous beam they have given span moments as well as the support moments they again span moment as well as the support moment so for example if you are going to have one beam like this so this is one support this is uh, another support this is another support and this is another support correct then next what happens is if you see this continuous beam uh, so here in this we are going to have span moments as well as the support moment so for example if you see so at the center we can have the support moments at the center we can have the 
uh, at the center we can have the span movements then next is uh, at the supports we can have the support movements so we can have the support movements here at the supports so that is what here they have given span movements as well as the support movement span movement means these values so here what coefficient we have to take then next they have given support movement means these values what we have to take so center we have span movements at the support we will have support movements so now how to take so near the middle of what you can say near middle of end span so near uh, what you can say middle of end span means here what value we have to take that is 1 by 12 1 by 12 that is for dead and imposed load and 1 by 10 for live load you can take 1 by 10 for the live load this is the near middle of end span next is at middle of interior span so now this span will be interior this is end span this is end span so now this is the middle of the interior span so here we have to take 1 by 16 what they have given here or 1 by 12 for or what you can say or 1 by 12 for the live load this is for the uh, middle of the interior span then next comes is next we have is uh, uh, support movements we have so support movements you can see at the support next to end support so here so this is the end support at support next to end support means this is the support so here we are going to use coefficient as 1 divided by 10 1 by divided by 10 that is for dead load and for live load you can use 1 divided by 9 so here they have given negative negative means like we are going to have negative movement the next is at other interior support at other interior support for example if you have another support here now another support here so at this interior support what happens is that we are going to use this coefficient 1 by 12 and 1 by 9 1 by 12 or 1 by 9 so this will be like uh, at the interior other interior supports what we have then next is we are going to use uh, this uh, shear coefficients so again for dead load and imposed load and for imposed load they have given at the end support it is coefficient is 0.4 and 0.45 at support next to end support at suppose this is the end support we have at support next to end support we can use this coefficient 0 0.6 0 0.5 0 0.6 and 0 0.6 and other interior supports if you have so if you have another one interior support here one support here so then next what happens that uh, this will be the interior support so this time we can use 0 0.5 for dead load and imposed load fixed and we can use 0 0.6 for the imposed load which is not fixed then next is regarding the effective span so this effective span uh, uh, this clause is also given in page number 34 of IS 456 so already we have seen this for a simply supported beam or a slab the effective span of a member will be clear span plus effective depth of the slab or a beam or center to center distance of the support whichever is less already we have used this many a times next is we are going to have for continuous beam or a slab for a continuous beam or a slab so you can refer this uh, code book same thing uh, they have given so let me show you once page number uh, 34 and 35 here you can see now for simply supported beam here they have given that is the effective span and for continuous beam or slab here they have given uh, so there are certain clauses what they have given so let me read it out same thing I have written it here also that is in the case of continuous beam or a slab if the width of support is less than 1 by 12 of clear span if the width of support is less than 1 by 12 of the clear span the effective span shall be as of 22.a clause 22.a that means previously what we have seen for a simply supported beam same thing can be used if the supports are if the supports are wider than 1 by 12 of the clear span or 600 mm whichever is less then the effective length or span can be taken as under that is for the end span with one end fixed and the other continuous or for other intermediate span the effective spans shall be clear span between the supports what clear span you have that will be the 
effective span so this will be the case when one end is fixed and other is continuous or for intermediate spans for example if the end span with one end free and other continuous one end is free and other is continuous then effective span shall be equal to clear span plus half the effective depth of the beam or slab or clear span plus half the width of the discontinuous support whichever is less and in the case of span with roller uh, uh, the effective span shall be distance between the centers of the bearing roller or bearing what we have so that time the effective span will be the distance between the center of the bearings the next is for cantilever beam the effective length of the cantilever shall be taken as its length to the face of the support plus half the effective depth except where it forms the end of a continuous beam where the length to the support of uh, center of support shall be taken the next is the span to depth ratio so usually what happens is that the continuous beams carry heavy uh, dead load and superimposed loads so therefore the span to depth ratio is normally taken between 10 to 50 so now let us uh, try to see one uh, problem uh, design a continuous reinforced beam of rectangular section which is supporting a dead load of 10 kN meter dead load is 10 kN meter and live load is 12 kN per meter over a span of uh, over 3 spans of 6 meters each over uh, 3 spans we have we have 3 spans 1 span we have 2 span we have and uh, this is the third span 3 spans we have which is of what you can say 6 meters each the ends are simply supported these ends are simply supported adopt m20 grade of concrete and fe415 steel and sketch the details of the reinforcement so now effective span they have given it as 6 meters dead load they have given it as 10 kN meters live load they have given, given 12 kN per meter concrete is m20 and steel is fe415 that is fck is 20 and fy is 41 5. The next let us uh, decide the depth of the beam so we can take the span to depth ratio as uh, we can assume between 10 to 15 so let us assume it as uh, 10 so therefore span to depth ratio is taken 10 then therefore if you divide by 10 therefore the effective depth will be d is equal to span divided by 10 so therefore span is 6000 divided by 10 so this will be equal to 600 mm so let us assume the effective depth as 600 mm and uh, total depth overall depth as 650 mm and let us assume the width of the beam is equal to 300 mm so therefore the cover to the tension seal that is equal to 50 mm then next we have to calculate the loads first one is self weight of the beam so cross section multiplied by the density cross section is 0.3 we have overall depth is 0.65 multiplied by density of concrete that is 25 so if you multiply you get answer as 4.875 kN per meter the next dead load already it is given 10 kN meter uh, floor finishes we can have it as 0.15 0.25 kN meter therefore total dead load will be equal to 15 kN meter then next is uh, live load we have which is already given that is 12 kN per meter then next is uh, let us try to calculate the bending moment and shear force coefficient so if you want you can use any classical methods and you can find it out or otherwise you can follow the tables which are being table number 12 and 13 which are being given in the IS code so we have to calculate the negative moment and we have to calculate the positive moment that is span moment and support moment we have to calculate if you want to calculate this negative moment we have to refer that table which is being given so negative moment are the interior support negative moment are the interior support they given so we are calculating now the bending moment so we are calculating the bending moment of what you can say yeah, negative bending moment that means support moment we are calculating so that is due to dead load and live load g is nothing but dead load q is nothing but live load so for dead load uh, that is at support next to end support it is 1 by 10 
and uh, for uh, live load it is 1 by 9 that is wl square by uh, the w is nothing, g is nothing but uh, dead load and q is nothing but live load uh, g is how much 15 into span is 6 square divided by 10 this is for the dead load and for live load it is uh, 1 by 9 1 by 9 multiplied by q into l square that is live load into span square 6 square so multiplied by 1.5 it was 50, 15 into 6 square divided by 10 12 into 6 square divided by 9 so therefore if you multiply you get answer as 153 kilo newton meter then next is if you are going to go for positive bending moment that is span bending moment it is span bending moment then next is m positive that is equal to g n square by 12 that is near the near middle of end span that is 1 by 12 for dead load and 1 by 10 for the live load same thing will have 1 by 12 for dead load and 1 by 10 for the live load that is g is nothing but the dead load q is nothing but the live load g l square by 12 plus g l square by 10 multiplied by 1.5 so 1.5 multiplied by g is 15 l is 6 q is uh, 12 multiplied by 6 square so answer will be 132 kilo newton meter the next is maximum shear force at the support so for so shear we have given the coefficient again here that is at the support is given by you can see at the support next end support that is 0.6 and 0.6 that is 0.6 multiplied by g plus q multiplied by n so this coefficient we have to multiply multiplied by what you have to do is multiplied by 1.5 as the factor of safety it is 0.6 multiplied by span is 6 multiplied by g is 15 that is dead load and uh, live load is 12 multiplied by 1.5 so if you get if you simplify we will get answer as 145.8 kilo newton we will have the answer then next is we are going to check for the limiting moment mu lim that is for uh, fe415 grade of steel we, we are going to have 0.138 fck bd square that is 0.138 fck is 20 b is uh, what can say 300 d is small d that is 600 square so if you multiply you will get answer as 298 kilo newton meters if you check this uh, mu limiting moment is 298 and our moment is how much less therefore 153 132 145 yeah so mu is less than mu lm so therefore our section is a uh, under reinforced section then next is uh, we have to calculate the main reinforcement so if you want you can use this formula and you can calculate the value of ast or otherwise we have used earlier one formula that is ast is equal to 0 0.5 into fck divided by f of i into bracket of 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4.59 into mu divided by fck bd square already we have used many times that formula so that formula if you use and you can calculate the moment so for negative moment we have to calculate and for positive moment we have to calculate the reinforcement so now for uh, 153 kilo newton meter we can calculate the area of steel if you calculate area of steel will be 780 mm square 780 mm square so 780 mm square means we can provide two bars of uh, 25 mm dia so it is 490 or 491 we have area of one bar so if you multiply it by 2 you will get around 982 mm square you can provide two bars of 25 mm dia at supports this is for support moment next is for the span moment or positive bending moment area similarly if you substitute in the formula and if you calculate area required will be 675 mm square 675 mm square so therefore again we can provide two bars of uh, 25 mm dia itself so, so so we are having 20 mm dia or 25 mm dia so you can use 25 mm dia itself we cannot we are not having 22 mm dia so therefore we can use 25 mm dia itself the next is uh, we are going to cal we are going to check for shear and deflection so for shear we will try to have we will check tau v is equal to vu by b into b vu is 145.8 into 10 raised to 3 divided by b is 300 d is 600 so if you simplify you will get answer as 0.81 newton per mm square then next is percentage of steel that is ast by bd multiplied by 100 
a steel at bd multiplied by 100 so area of steel provided is 9 into 2 b is 300 d is 600 so percentage of steel will be 0.54 then next is based on this percentage of steel we can refer uh, is uh, 456 that is table number 19 so you can see now table number 19 go to table number uh, 19 which is being given in the code book so here we are given you see for uh, M20 grade of concrete and percentage of steel is 0 0.5. So it is 0 0.48. Uh, so if you are going to check it for 0 0.49, uh, what you can say 0 0.54, it will be 0 0.49 Newton per mm square. So if you check this uh, tau V and uh, tau C, so tau V is greater than tau C, tau V is greater than tau C, therefore shear reinforcement is required to resist the shear. Therefore, V US is equal to shear that is total shear 145.8 minus of tau V into tau C into B into D tau C into B into D tau C is 0.49 and B is 300 capital is 600. So, answer will be 57.6 kilo newtons. Then, next, what we can do, we can use uh, 8 mm dia two leg stirrups near the supports. Then next we'll check spacing that is 0.87 FF5 to ASV divided by VUS. 0.87 FF5 is 4.15. ASV that is 8 mm dia we have pi by 4 into 8 square it will be 50. So as we have 2 left multiplied by 2 multiplied by D600 divided by VUS. That is the shear that has to be resisted by the steel 57.6. So spacing will be 376 mm. Another Clause is that 0 0.75 times of uh, D or 300 mm, whichever is less that has to be provided. So these are greater than 300 mm, so therefore we can provide nominal that is 300 mm. Therefore, we are going to adopt two legged 8 mm uh, dia stirrups about 300 mm center to center towards the support. The next thing we will check for uh, deflection. So percentage of steel is 0.54. So from that we can calculate uh, the so here we have zoomed already many times we have calculated the deflection based on this we can calculate the Uh, KT value that is if you calculate you will get KT value as 1.5 KC is for compression steel and KF is for uh, flange sections we don't have this so therefore this will be equal to 1 this will be equal to 1 only this value will be 1.2 multiplied by L by D basic L is 6000 uh, L by D basic is nothing but uh, uh, continuous beam it is 26 already we have seen in the earlier classes also uh, L by D uh, is 26 for continuous beams. So 26 multiplied by 1.2 multiplied by 1 by 1. So therefore this will be equal to 31. That is L by D maximum is equal to 31. The next is L by D actual. So L by D actual span is almost 6000 divided by D actual is 600. So that is equal to 10 which is less than 31. So therefore our uh, beam is satisfying the deflection criteria. At the end, we have to draw the longitudinal section of the beam as well as we have to draw the cross section of the beam. So, if you draw the longitudinal section, we have calculated the reinforcement which is provided at the support that is top reinforcement, negative reinforcement. So, therefore, we are having two bars of 25 mm dia. Then, next is at bottom, we can use two bars of 25 mm dia itself. Then, next is regarding the stirrups, what we have that is eight leg, two leg. What you can say 8 mm dia about 300 mm center to center. So you can show the cross section also that is at top you have 2 bars of 25 mm dia at bottom we have 2 bars of 25 mm dia. So width of the beam is 300 that is section XX and Y1. So if you cut section here or if you cut section near the support.